Hello, welcome back to the channel. So I was trying to think of like a Halloween themed video I could make for this week, but all the ideas I had required quite a lot and I've left this quite last minute. So I'm going to talk about a specific class which I ran with my third years recently. It was a murder mystery themed class. So that's like almost kind of Halloween. I don't really go into the specifics of my lessons very often, apart from when me and Tanya talked about our introduction lessons. So this will just kind of give you a little bit of an insight into my planning process and the kind of things I do in my classes. Let's get straight into that. So the reason I did a lesson on this topic was because with my third years at the moment, I'm basically doing project-based classes. So each project lasts four lessons or so. Then we move on to a new project, but I had one random extra class I wasn't expecting. So I was like, okay, what's like a fun one-off lesson we can do, which will make them kind of talk a bit. It's quite a low level lesson, but you can adapt it any way you like, make it more complicated or whatever. Also, I only have nine kids in that class. And I think the only reason this lesson worked was cause there was so few kids and we had time to go through every Everyone, as you'll hear about in a bit. So a lot of the time, at least with my first years, all of my lesson plans just come from my head or based off of my predecessor's lesson plans that I make my own. But for like one-off classes and stuff, I'll very often just start googling lesson ideas, different ideas for skits that they could do and stuff like that. Especially for my third years who I try and encourage to be more spontaneous with their English and things. I stumbled across some murder mystery related thing and it's different from what I ended up with, but generally you have to adapt whatever you find online to your own situation anyway. The basis of the lesson is that I set up a murder scenario and the kids in pairs have to come up with alibis and then question each other and basically decide who looks the most suspicious and who is most likely the killer. So I actually put this lesson together literally in the space of an hour. I wasn't expecting to have that lesson. I was like, I need something now. So it was very fast. I just found that simple concept online, threw together a PowerPoint, and I was like, okay, we good, we good to go. I made like some really basic worksheet template so they'd have something to write their alibis and stuff on. But honestly, like it could have been a blank piece of paper. It wouldn't have made much difference. When I started the lesson, I showed them the PowerPoint and was basically introduced the lesson not in character, I was still me, but I was kind of playing into the theme of it and like being all a bit more mysterious and exaggerated and stuff to try and enthuse, 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 enthuse them. Make. I wanted to be more enthusiastic. Oh, there's been a murder here at uh, this school. The victim in my scenario was my co LT, who is an American jet that comes to my school once a week. So I just, over the course of a few slides, go through a couple of the details of the murder, like time of death, where it happened, cause of death, things like that. And then at this point, the kids are kind of just a bit like, what the fuck? Like, what are we doing? Why? This is so random. Why are we doing this? I'm just like, it's gonna be fun, kids. I promise. Just like, stick with it, please. Basically, in my scenario and details of the murder and stuff, I made it clear that all of the kids in the class are suspects, and today we were gonna find out who murdered David Sensei. So, and I explained the first thing you have to do is come up with an alibi. So I gave them some time, and obviously, depending on the level of your school, you could add requirements to how much they should write, what they should include and stuff. For me, I was like, literally just any one simple sentence is fine. So I think the alibis we had were, um, oh, we were studying in the library, we were in PE class, we were in the music room. One pair actually thought outside the box a little bit, because I did say you can do anything you want, it's obviously hypothetical. But the fourth pair said they were at karaoke singing an Ed Sheeran song. So I write all those up on the board and then I ask the kids to come up with some questions to ask about the details of these alibis. And the whole time that we're doing any aspect of this activity, I have an example in my PowerPoint for me and my JTE as if we were partners. Our example alibi was we were in the staff room drinking coffee and planning the next lesson together. And then when I gave example questions that you could write about alibis, I had, um, oh, what other teachers were there? What were you planning a lesson on? So each pair had to come up with two questions for each of the other alibis. So after that, I basically explained what the main activity would be. So pairs would come up one at a time. One pair would stand outside the classroom and the one that was left would be questioned by the rest of the students about their alibi, like what were they doing and stuff. The other partner from that original pair would then come in and be asked the same questions and basically, the less consistent the answers are, if their stories don't match up, then 
that's suspicious, obviously. And then at the end, I was like, okay, and then we'll work out together who is the killer. Bum, bum, bum. And they were starting to get more into it at this point when they realized where it was going, and they were like, oh, okay, cool. So I gave them basically one minute to talk to their partner about their alibi so they could get their story straight and then we began the activity. It went smoothly in terms of the procedure. The kids definitely enjoyed it. They were like, oh, kawaii, kawaii, which means scared every time they had to come up and they were like so nervous and stuff, even though it was such a simple activity. And obviously, because their alibis were made up, if they got a question they didn't expect, they'd have to be really kind of spontaneous with their English, which is what I was kind of going for. Like, you have to come up with answers on the spot, you don't have time to prepare. Um, that, I guess, was the most um, effective part of the lesson in terms of actually teaching English or practicing English conversation. But the, the one thing which was stressing me out this whole time was that we had one pair come up and their answers perfectly matched up and everyone was like, oh yeah, impressive, like, oh, okay, cool. Next pair came up, same again, it was like, oh, they looked so smug, they were like, yes, we got this, we got this, we ain't no killers. And then the third pair came up, and again, everything matched, and I was just standing there like, oh, are we gonna get to the end of this lesson and like, we don't have a killer because everyone's stories were suspicion free. I was very, very stressed. But luckily, oh my God, this final pair saved my life. The one that had the more creative um, alibi of at karaoke singing in a cheering song, they fucked up every question. They answered in English, so it was great. But like, none of their answers matched. Everyone was pissing themselves laughing. And after each one, I'd be writing on the board the question. And then it was like tick or cross of it. And it was like wrong, wrong, wrong. Everyone was pissing themselves. It was very funny. And then that just made it even more hilarious at the end when I was like, okay, I guess it's time to see uh, who is the killer. Eyeballing these two students hard. Everyone's laughing. It was a great time. Yeah, that was pretty much the the end of the lesson It was really funny because the the kids tried to defend themselves at the end as well Even though we all knew so I was just like, okay, let's hear it Like what's up? What is your reasoning here? Because the questions they had were uh, how many Ed Sheeran songs did you sing? One of them said two, the other just said many. One said how long were you there for? Uh, one of them said four hours, one of them said six hours, and a question they got was why were you not in school? And one of them said, oh, we weren't feeling well, and the other said we were tired. So he started to defend himself like, oh, you know, she was tired, so she fell asleep for those last two hours, so only I uh, was singing for six hours. And I was like, okay, but like she was there, so like, did y'all pay for six hours? Did both of you pay for that? And he was just like, mm, yeah. And I was just like, mm-hmm, and then he was like, oh, and I said, uh, I have headache, but, oh, my English, I, uh, my English is bad, I meant tired, and I was just like, did you, I, mm-hmm, I didn't think so, pal. It was a really fun lesson, I'm just really glad that some of them messed up, because what I didn't expect was that because their level is lower, all of their questions are really basic and obvious, so of course when they have that minute to talk about their alibi to each other and get their story straight, they'll cover all the basic things. So it was very close to being a failure of a lesson, but it worked out in the end and it was very funny. I hope you found hearing about the specifics of a lesson kind of useful, maybe it gave you some ideas. Basically, when I want to do a more fun and creative lesson, the actual specific scenario or situation is irrelevant, it's more about just giving them the opportunity to be creative with English. Um, so for example, in the past I've run a lesson where kids have to design their own superhero and then two come up at a time and they, the kids have, they introduce their superheroes and the kids have to vote for uh, who they think would win and with more advanced classes you can make that more of a debate. But yeah, if you want to hear about more of my lesson plans or if you can tell me what you thought about that one or want to tell me some of your own lesson plan ideas for the sort of fun creative situations which kids have a chance to talk within then please comment any of that below because I'm definitely curious to hear and don't forget to give the video a like and also subscribe to the channel. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. <laughs>